my channel my name is Jordan of the healthy living blog and Instagram dancing for donuts and I'm back today with something a little different I have officially been a dog mom for just over six months and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've learned some tips and tricks some things I recommend some must-haves what to expect how to budget and all that stuff so this is my dog Ovi he just got neutered but I want to preface this video by saying three things one I work from home and that is a huge factor in why we got a dog because I can take care of it Two, I live with my boyfriend and we split the cost of everything which is also very helpful and three we did go with a breeder to get our dog I really want to rescue a dog at some time in my life it's something I'm super super passionate about and and I firmly believe that we should all be rescuing the animals that don't have homes but it did not work for us at this time. It was very hard to find a dog that was hypoallergenic, which means it doesn't shed, and he's an Aussie doodle. Alex, my boyfriend, is allergic to dogs, so that was really important, and it was so hard to find one to rescue. So I'm hoping down the line we can, but I just wanted to tell you that up front. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the puppy time, the puppy months, weeks, all of it. Basically, dogs can't go outside to go to the bathroom until they have all their shots, which is an eight week period after you pick up the dog in general. So they have to be, I think, about three months before they can go outside. What I would recommend is training them on a grass pee pad inside, you can put it inside your house or apartment, um, but, and then if you have a patio or any outdoor area, you can put the grass pad out there, which is what we did. So the grass pad just trains them that this is where you go to the bathroom. And I have to tell you, our dog has not had a single accident since our first day here with him. The grass pad's great and then bells. We have bells on our door and he hits them when he has to go to the bathroom. And that is so helpful because he can just communicate with us that way. The next thing is crate training. I definitely, definitely recommend crate training if you can. I don't think it works for everyone, but it worked for us. A crate sort of teaches the dog that this is their little home, it's their comfortable space, and they're not gonna go to the bathroom in it. And when you leave them alone, you can put them in the crate and you don't have to worry because uh, let me tell you, this dog would get into all kinds of trouble if we let him roam around. You know, we leave him in there with some toys and a little treat when we leave and it's perfect. Finding a dog that works for you. Maybe I should have mentioned this first, but I think it's super important to find a breed that's going to be conducive to your lifestyle. An Aussie Doodle is so, so high energy, high maintenance in the sense that he needs 90 minutes of exercise a day. It's not something like I can just leave him for hours in the crate and come home and everything's fine. He will be off the wall if I leave him in the crate for a while. So, you know, I'll go to a workout class or lunch with a friend and maybe be gone for three hours, at most four, and then I need to come home and play with him. That also means that we go on a lot of walks. So I love walking and it's awesome, but you're outside, you're like on the move a lot. Do you live in a place where you can do that all the time? I think living in Southern California is such a blessing when you have a dog that's this active. But if you live in a city where it snows a lot and you don't wanna be in the snow, you don't wanna be out all the time, maybe think about a dog that is a little less energy, a dog that doesn't need to be as active. And if you're looking for a snuggly pet, maybe you're looking for an animal that's more um, attached to a person and things like that. Next, I wanna talk about food. There is a lot out there about a grain-free diet and whether it's good for a dog or not. After talking to our vet and talking to our breeder, I feel like it's the same as with humans, right? One day we could read that coconut oil is amazing for you and the next day it's like the worst thing ever. So we kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt. I would recommend talking to your vet your breeder, whoever you adopted the dog from, doing some research, like actual research online, and finding out what's gonna work for your dog. We are feeding Ovi a grain-free diet. It's not like we looked for that, that's just the food that was recommended to us. And we'll get him treats. We're not as picky about the treats, like I don't look if the treats are grain-free, I just make sure that they're good treats for him. We also feed him farmer's dog sometimes. Not always, it is, it's expensive you guys, like I'm not gonna lie to you, it's expensive. But what I love is that it's fresh, healthy food, just like I wanna treat my body the best, like I want him to have the best too. I can't always afford that, but with a farmer's dog what we do is have mostly dry food and then a little bit of wet food so that he gets the benefit of like the nutrients, but it's not gonna break the bank. 
Time management. Time management is potentially the most important thing I've learned having a dog. It is not easy, you guys. You've probably heard this a million times, but having a dog is a huge responsibility because they require so much attention and love and care. That meant to me, when I wanted to go to a 9 a.m. workout class when he was a puppy and he hadn't gone to the bathroom yet, I couldn't go. I have to make sure he goes to the bathroom first, you know? Or there are days I need to take him to the dog park because like I said, he's super active. Sometimes his workout takes priority over mine and that's okay. It's just, I can't do all the things I want to do and I can't leave him alone all the time and just go out gallivanting. Or if there's a conference or an event, lunch, like, I would love to be all over the place. I would love to take day trips down to San Diego to see my friends all the time, but I need to think about him too. So that's been really, really important. So it's kind of just figuring out a routine that works for you. Obviously, as they get older, you have a bit more flexibility and there's more of a schedule, but when they're young, oh man, it's a doozy. The next thing I wanna talk about is expenses. If I'm being honest, having a dog is not cheap, but it's not the most expensive thing in the world. And like I said, I split the cost with my boyfriend, but at the end of the day, what really costs the most is his like regular everyday expenses. There's food, doggy bags. If you live in a city and you have to pick up after them, treats, treats are a lot, toys. He breaks so many toys and we have to order more. Toys are expensive and care. When we want to travel, we have to make sure that he's taken care of. So when we go to Asia for two weeks in February, I have to pay someone to watch him for all those two weeks. And luckily we have amazing friends that will do it for us, but I still need to pay them. It's like, you know, it's a lot of work. And so I'd say those are the biggest expenses and obviously vet appointments too, but you don't have to go to the vet all the time. Just like you don't have to go to the doctor as a person all the time, I hope. Some other pros and cons, I just wanna sum up really fast. Pros of having a dog, so obvious, endless love and snuggles. I mean, hopefully you get a dog that's snuggly, but man, it's so nice having like somebody to love you unconditionally. I mean, you could, you, you know, if your dog does something bad and you have to like yell at them for a second, two minutes later, they're gonna forgive you and they love you so, 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 so much. And then having a buddy is always nice. Like I said, I work from home. My boyfriend travels all the time and I just love having a little buddy with me. It's just like endless. I mean, Ovi makes me laugh every single day, like laugh out loud every day. He's so entertaining, he's so funny and he's my baby. I truly can't imagine like life without him now. I know it's only been six months with him, but it feels like so much longer and he's grown so much. Like definitely cherish those puppy like times, even if they're hard because they grow up so fast and oh, it's just the best. But also it is, like I said, a lot of work, something to budget out for, something to prepare for. It's not something that I would ever recommend somebody do on a whim or an impulse. I know puppies are cute. I almost got one a few years ago and then really thought about it. And I was like, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the means. This isn't gonna work for me. Just think about that because you have your whole life to get a dog. And if it's not right for right now, that's okay but you have to make sure that it's right for you because ultimately you wanna be the best parent you can be to this dog. Okay, I just took a look at my notes and I have a few more things. One, I wanted to say that clicker training is awesome. It is basically when you get a little clicker, you can get them on Amazon and you basically teach them different things. So Obi's really good about sitting and we taught him to shake, like put his paw up, which we thought was so cute. And he can sometimes come on command um, or stay. We're teaching him all of these things with the clicker. So there are lots of YouTube videos that are just on clicker training and I definitely recommend that. I also recommend a frozen peanut butter Kong. If I haven't mentioned that already, we like to put peanut butter in the Kong toys. They're like rubber toys. And we put it in the freezer because if you don't put it in the freezer, they can eat the peanut butter in two seconds. A few other things for toys, hooves, antlers, Himalayan milk chews. I think that's what it's called. And no stink bully sticks. Those are the four things that are like if he's really bothering me or if I really need to get work done, those are the things that I give him to entertain him. And the last thing is never feed your dog from where you eat. Never feed him from the table, never feed him from the couch. Our dog is so hungry all the time. He is so hungry and he begs a lot. And we never taught him to do that. He's just been like that. And we never feed him from where we eat, but he's hungry. So just to make sure that your dog doesn't become like that or expect that, never feed them from where you eat. And we also love to give him like frozen carrots, frozen blueberries. We'll give him bananas, he loves bananas. Like I said, he loves peanut butter. 
but you know, if you're ever worried, you can just Google it and find out what's okay for your dog to eat and what's not. Chocolate is obviously the biggest no. I'm pretty sure they can't have grapes. Um, I don't think they can have cherries, but definitely just look it up so that you never have to worry. And try not to give them too much people food. Anything with seasonings can really give them a stomach ache. So that is it. I hope that didn't take too long. I just wanted to give you as much information as possible because I know that it's a lot to think about. Um, but I can tell you that having a dog and having an animal at all is just like the most wonderful thing that you can do in your life. It brings so much joy every day. And while it is a lot of work, it is so worth it. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or comment below. I'm here to help you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.